Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this Halloween type effect and these ghosts in the background. So first we need to download this background. You can do that off of the LearnDigitalScrapbooking.com website. So let's go there. Okay, let's go to backgrounds. And we'll scroll down here to find that background, which is right there. And if we click on that, it'll automatically download a zip file with that background inside. So now that's there. Let's go ahead and quit our browser. And let's go over here to our hard drive. And there it is right there, Halloween graveyard.zip. Let's drag it up here. We can close that. Let's slide this down out of the way a little bit so that we can see what we're doing. Okay, now double click on the zip file and it'll open up. Okay, and there it is. All we need to do is drag this down into our window and it'll automatically open up into a new document. Okay, and there it is. Let's slide this back up. Okay, now we need to bring in our type. So let's select the type tool. Click right here. Let's make it an orange. Let's go ahead and select our color right now. Let's make it an orange color. We'll make it this orange right here. Okay, click right here and let's type in Halloween. Click the check mark to accept that. What I want to do with this type is make it look like it's got some drops coming off of it or like it's melting or something like that. In order to do that we need to simplify that layer. So I'm going to duplicate that layer, Command J or Control J, and now I'm going to turn the visibility of this first layer off by clicking on that eyeball. See that red line going through shows that that's not visible. And then I'm going to simplify this layer by coming up here under this uh, these lines with the arrow. Click on that and the drop down menu comes out and we'll click on simplify layer. Now that's not editable type anymore, but we can do a lot of things to it. We're going to use the liquify filter. So come up under filter, distort, and liquify. Now what this liquify filter does is it can you can move pixels around. I'm going to use this tool right here which is the warp tool. And with a fairly small brush and you can change the size of your brush by hitting the bracket keys. The uh, left bracket will make it smaller and the right bracket will make it bigger. We want this to be fairly small but not too small and we just want to click and drag. And see how it just pulls those pixels out? So we're just going to do that in several different places. Make it look like drips. So that it's like it's melting or something's dripping off of it. So we're just going to do that in several different places. You can do as many of these as you want. You can just keep going and going, or you can just do a few if you want. It's up to you. You're the artist. Let's put some on this O, maybe up on the inside of this O, dripping off. You can do it as much as you want. I don't know, does this look like a Halloween effect to you? 
kind of did to me when I was thinking about it. So, and every letter is going to be unique. This E is not going to be like the other E because it just depends on where I drag. So you get unique letters all the way across. And we can go something like Okay, how does that look? Maybe one or two right here in this crossbar of the H. Something like that. Okay, click OK. Okay, there's our type. Now we want to put some splatters and things like that in behind it. So let's come over here to these splatters. This is just in the shapes panel over, over here. It's got these little splatters. I'm going to use this one right here. I'm going to drag it in. It's white, so I want to color it the same orange. So with the orange selected, just hit the paint bucket tool. And just click right over here and it'll color that whole graphic. Now it looks like the drips are going up. I want the drips to go down, so I'm going to rotate that. Hit Command T or Control T if you're on a PC. When you come up here to the corner, you can see that the cursor turns into a curved double headed arrow. You can just click and drag around and it'll rotate that. So we just want it to look like it's dripping down instead of up. You can just put that up. We'll put it up somewhere like that. Click on the check mark. And we can copy that layer just by making sure that layer is selected and hitting Command J or Control J or you can drag it up to this new layer icon. Command J or Control J is just easier. Now we have a copy of it. Let's get the move tool and we can move that over. Now you don't want it to be exactly the same so let's rotate that a little bit. Command T or Control T and you still get that double arrow, curved arrow. Let's just rotate it a little bit so that it doesn't look like it's an exact copy. In fact, let's move it over here a little bit. Something like that. Let's click on the check mark. Let's grab this other one, bring it in. Let's color it the same way with the paint bucket. Only I want to get rid of this big one right here. Now, usually I would use a layer mask, but in this case, I'm just going to erase it. Oh. it. Needs to be simplified before I erase it. That's fine. Let's simplify it. Let's just erase this big big one right there because I don't want that on there. I just want the little ones. Okay, something like that. Now we can also go to the to the brush tool. Down here, if you go into brush, if you click on this, you get this, uh, you get the brush menu. And up here, we can click on wet media brushes. And right here in the wet media brushes, if you just hover over this one right here, it says drippy water. Let's click on that one. Now, if we go to brush settings, we don't want it very soft. We don't want it very hard either. So let's just bring it up to about 85. That's fine. And let's move the scatter. to 100. Let's see what spacing does. You can watch down here and see kind of what it does. Spacing will really space it out quite a bit. Let's just keep it about like that. Okay. Now we have a really small brush. You can see that. Let's, let's just click on here and see what it does. You can't even see it. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger. We'll use the bracket key. 
Oh, there you can see. Now that looks okay. It's Command Z. Let's get rid of both of those. Command Z or Control Z, get rid of both of those. And let's go ahead and put these on a new layer. And we can just start clicking randomly in here, making it look like a spatter or like drops. And you can see, watch down here, when I click, when I click again over here, they're just random patterns. No click will look the same. So you just random click here and there. Okay, and that's probably good. I'm going to call that good. There's your Halloween. You can do as much or as little as you want. Maybe that's too much. If you think it's too much, just turn off one of these layers. Turn off any of these layers. Use your eraser. Get rid of something if, you, if it's too much. You can do as much or as little as you want. Let's put all those in a group by selecting all of them. Just hold down your shift key and select the top one. Hold down your shift key and select the bottom one. And then click on this icon right up here is the create a new group. And it creates the group. And we'll just double click on that name. And we'll name it the type. Okay, now let's make our ghosts. We're going to do that by going to the shape tool. Choosing the elliptical tool. Let's make this ghost white. Clicking on the color there, make him white. And let's draw out an oval. Something like that. Let's rotate it just a little bit. Command T or Control T brings up these handles and we can just rotate it just a little bit with that curved arrow again. Click on the check mark. And just click on yes, that's okay. Now let's make another layer. And let's bring in some eyes. Same tool, elliptical tool. Let's just make some circles. Hold down the shift as you're dragging, it'll be a perfect circle. And we want to color that black. So let's go ahead and just click on this little icon down here. That'll make the default foreground and background, which will make your foreground black. Go ahead and click on the paint bucket and click inside of that circle. And there we go. That's one eye. Let's make two eyes. If you click if you hold down your command and option if on a Mac or your control and alt on a PC, see the double arrow? You can just grab that eye and just slide it over and it'll make a copy. Okay, so there's a copy of the eye. Okay, now let's select this layer right here, the ghost layer, and let's go up to Filter, Distort, and Liquify. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did. That's okay to rasterize this layer, that's fine. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to use that Warp tool and just drag that oval out so it looks more like a ghost. Now you can see when the brush is really small it doesn't really move very much. Let's make that brush bigger. Hit the, the right bracket key make that bigger and now it'll really come out. There it goes. We want it to come out to kind of like a point. Make it look like a ghost. Something like that. Let's maybe come bring this out a little bit. Up here. Okay, something like that. You can just do whatever you want here. Okay, let's keep it like that. Let's click OK. And it's going to bring that back in. 
and there's our ghost okay let's rotate him a little bit more again command T or control T let's rotate him just a little bit more and I'm going to slide him down this way a little bit something like that now it looks like we need to fix his eyeballs you can do the eyeballs to select both of those layers and hit command E or control E and that will merge his eyes into one layer and now we can rotate them just a little bit because we rotated the ghost itself need to rotate his eyes let's bring him down like that hit the check mark okay now he doesn't look like a ghost yet he looks like he's cut out with scissors and just pasted on there so let's take that layer the ghost layer let's come up here to the blend modes and we'll change that blend mode to overlay now he's looking a little more like a ghost but he still looks like he's cut out with scissors so let's go up to the filter and blur and Gaussian blur and we will just blur him out a little bit just do it till you think it looks right I think I'm gonna keep it about right there Okay, let's select the eyes. Let's zoom in a little bit on the eyes. I'm hitting command and the plus sign, or control and the plus sign. If you're on a PC, do the same thing. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And okay, rasterize, that's fine. Okay, now that has the same setting as the ghost but that's a little too much for the eyes so let's back it off a little bit make sure this preview box is checked if it's not checked you won't be able to see what you're doing so make sure that that's checked and you'll be able to see in real time the effect that you're having on it so let's just blur it out let's just go something like that okay and we'll zoom back out command zero or control zero We'll zoom it out so that it fits in the window. And okay, his eyes look a little bit dark. I'm gonna make sure that the eyes are, are selected and I'm going to just change the opacity just a little bit. Let's bring it down maybe 60%. We'll go 50% and call it good. Okay. Now he looks like a ghost. Let's go ahead and copy him, okay? Let's put him in a group. Select both of those layers by holding down the shift key and then come up here to the groups and create a new group and we'll call that group the ghost. Let's make a copy of that group by selecting the group and holding down the command or the control and the J key. And that makes a copy. Now with the move tool selected over here, let's just move him over. Let's flip him horizontally. You can do that if he's selected, the ghost copy is selected. Let's come up under image, rotate, and flip layer horizontal. That just flips him right over like that. And now let's move him a little bit over and let's rotate him just a little bit so that he doesn't look like he's an exact duplicate get those uh, double arrows double curved arrow slide him around a little bit like this let's bring him down just a little bit something like that and click the check mark okay now let's make another one and put him up here so we're going to copy this one right here. That's the first one. 
So Command J or Control J, that makes a copy. Let's slide him up here. Now he's going on top of the type. You can see that because you can see the change that it made to that type. So let's just slide him down underneath the type. You can do that by clicking on the whole group, holding down your mouse button, drag it down until the line between the type and the background is black and thick. Now if you drop it right there, see how the line between the ghost and the type and the line between the type and the background are black? If you drop it there, he's going to, he's going to go into that group. You want to make sure that just the line below the type and just above the background is black and drop him right there. Now he's in the back, but you can't see him because the background is so black. So let's just turn that arrow down. Let's grab this layer. This is the ghost layer. Let's just duplicate that. Command J or Control J and now you can see him a lot better. Now we have one problem here. This ghost is going on top of that headstone and on top of this headstone. I'm going to knock out the headstones, both headstones, out of that ghost so that it looks like he's farther back. So I'm going to do that with a layer mask and I can do a layer mask right on the uh, right on the group itself. So click on the ghost copy, come up here and click on the layer mask, add layer mask. Now we want to zoom in, hit the command and the plus sign or the control and the plus sign. Now hold down the space bar and you can move that up so we can see what we're doing. Now grab the brush and with black, when you paint black on a layer mask, you're going to be hiding it. So we want to hide the ghost where this headstone is so it looks like the ghost is behind the headstone. Same over here. So with the brush selected, make sure the layer mask is selected. It's got this blue line around it. And just start painting. Oh, we got the wrong brush. That can happen sometimes. Hit Command Z or Control Z. Let's go back and get our default brush. Click right there. Come back to this uh, drop down menu. Go to the default brushes. Let's just grab a brush right here. And we want to make it a fairly big brush. Maybe a little bigger than that. Let's go to our brush settings. So we want to make sure that we're not really hard but we don't want a soft brush either. We'll go about 80, 85, somewhere in between 80 and 85 is fine. And we'll come up here and we'll just start to brush in, paint with black to hide that ghost from that headstone. And if you go over too far, let's zoom in just a little bit more. Hit the command and the plus sign. If you go a little bit too far, you can just change your colors over here by clicking on this arrow or the default is just to click X. Hit the X key and that will swap the foreground and the background color. Now you're painting with white and you're painting with white on this layer mask. So the white will reveal the ghost and the black will hide the ghost. Now we want to hide the ghost down here too. Hold down the space bar. We'll just scroll up a little bit. Now you want to paint with black, so click X and that switches you back so that black is your foreground color. We'll start to paint right on this headstone. In black. To hide the ghost from that one. From this hide the ghost from this headstone. You can make the brush a little bit bigger now. And for some reason my computer's lagging today and I don't know why. Okay. Hit command zero, control zero to make it fit in the window and there you go. You have your Halloween, you have your ghosts, you have your background. And now you can bring in any picture of your kids in their werewolf or 
vampire costumes or whatever and you've got a nice Halloween scrapbook page. So that's the tutorial for today. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye.